Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. For today's lesson, we're going to talk about number bonds. And this is something that you might see in the second grade, right? Um, so we have four examples up here, and this is actually a fact family. Now, if you're not aware, a fact family is when you have three numbers and we do different operations with those three numbers to come up with different results. So we have six plus four equals blank, four plus six equals blank, 10 minus four equals blank, and 10 minus six equals blank. Now, some of us would say, well, why don't you just have the kids just, you know, memorize the addition facts or the subtraction facts and just put the answer in there. That's fine. Eventually, they will do that and they should do that. But we're going to use something called number bonds. And number bonds are helpful because it's going to help children when they get to algebra later on and also even when they get to take chemistry later on because they're going to be dealing with chemicals and bonds and elements and all of that. So what we do, we set up a number bond like this, one circle and two lines and then two other circles like this, right? So then we have six plus four. We know it's going to equal a larger number. So the larger number goes in the top bond. The two smaller numbers, in this case, the add-ins, we call those add-ins, the numbers in an addition problem, we call those add-ins. We have six and four, and we have six plus four, right? Now we can either count with our fingers or just know if we know that six plus four is 10, we just write our 10 right here. All right, we're going to do the same thing with four plus six. So imagine that we switch the order around. Right? Notice how the 6 was written first and the 4 was written second. So I wrote the 6 there and the 4 there. But now the 4 is written first and the 6 is written second. So we have a 4 and a 6. And 4 plus 6 is also 10. And that's also a manifestation of something that we like to call the commutative property. Meaning that when, you have, when you're doing addition, your two add-ins, it doesn't matter the order of the add-ins. The result is still going to be the same. Now, but if we're, doing, we're switching to subtraction, now we have 10 minus 4 and 10 minus 6. Now the 10 is still the largest number. So we also want to do this because it shows the relationship between addition and subtraction, right? And how addition and subtraction are just opposite operations. So if you do 10 minus 4, if you have 10 and you take away 4, what does that leave you with? You can count backwards from 10 by 4 using your fingers if you need to, and you end up at 6. So 10 minus 4 is also 6. And then the same thing, similarly, 10 minus 6, you start at 10 and you take 6 away, and you end up with four. And that's today's lesson.